Um, so geo git push. So git push is the thing where we have we have kind of like a whole like git tree growing on our computer. You can visualize this. Okay, so it's like all of our changes building up here, and then we push them up to GitHub to share them with the world. Uh, so in geo git, it's separate from git. You can't push to these changes that have been created in a separate, different kind of tree up into the GitHub world. And so with GeoGit, there wasn't really any place to push to. So it was very frustrating. You were building up this whole cool visualization on your computer, but then there wasn't some place online where you could share it. So over the summer, while I was working for the city of Boston, uh, I shared this with a couple of people back in the day. There's a site called GeoGinger that I, I built for them. It's geoginger.com. And it tracks things. Like it tracks the city of Boston's geodata. It tracks, um, I'll show you later, uh, the Divi bike stations that Stephen uh, uploaded for us. We did a full circle talking about the Divi bike stations. Um, OpenStreetMap. Uh, but people could also put their data on GitHub like they're used to. Like a lot of people are putting data on GitHub just to see those cool maps. And I can track that as well. I'll look at the history of your changes on that and then start from the beginning and build a separate record which shows those changes over time. Uh, to show you what that looks like, um, so Steven had the project with um, on GitHub, he was keeping a, a list of all the Divi bike stations. And then over the summer, several dozen or hundred, I'm not sure, hundred were added to uh, Chicago. Uh, and so there wasn't really any record of where new ones were being built. Just one day you would say where what bike stations are available, and it would tell you uh, now there's 100, now there's 120. Like it wouldn't, there's no history of Divi bike stations. Um, but if you look at this visualization here, from the first uh, push that I got from Steven uh, up to the last commit, yeah, I should have said that. So from the first commit to the last commit from Steven's project, I rebuilt those on GeoGinger with this GeoGit tool. And so the blue ones were just changed, which means that like the number of bikes that were there uh, changed. The green dots are ones that were added. So zoom in on the like, merchandise mark for a second. Uh, there's just these ones were already there, and then this one was added sometime between the first one and July 22nd. So for those who are a little bit lost right now, yeah. imagine that every you have a spreadsheet and every row in the spreadsheet represents a Divi station. So you're going to have columns in the spreadsheet. One column is going to be the number of bikes, the other is going to be the name of the station, and you've got 300 rows because there are 300 Divi stations. Another column is going to be the latitude, longitude, location of that station. And so if you if, if you take mapping software, whether it's on your desktop or online, and you upload that spreadsheet, it's going to match stuff. And then you click on each station, it's going to show you the other fields for that one row, right? Are you kind of with me there? Now, what happens if you change something? What happens if you, if you change the number of bytes or you add a new row to your spreadsheet, right? Now the spreadsheet has changed, and you want some way of tracking changes. It's just like when you are working in a Word document and you do version 2. That's why stuff is called version control, and you're just trying to track what's changed in the document. But instead of having a bunch of little files that are named, you know, bike stations version one, two, three, this is a more intelligent way of doing it. So you say save new changes. That's what happens when you get commit. Basically, saves new changes of a new version, and then you can upload those new kind of slices of the same spreadsheet to the internet. And then this website you build easily shows you what's changed in a visual way. Does that make sense? So he's. You're just visualizing the different versions of the spreadsheet. And all that's changed is a row has been added, it's been removed, or it's been changed somehow. Like, I think like the applications for this would be something like, uh, in Boston, I was using this on our map of bike routes. And you could actually go back in time and say from 2007 to 2009, these are all the bike routes that were added. From 2009 to 2013, a lot more were added. Like it accelerates. And it's the sort of thing where if we operate this, if we point it at all these open data resources, we don't have to like check them every day to see what the updates are. We don't have to map, like go back and map it several times and see if there's a new thing in my neighborhood. Instead, what I would like to have this do is point at something like the city of Chicago's data, and every time it changes, 
it logs that on a map. So even though there's only one source data set, what you're really going to see is like where is construction happening in Chicago? Where did, when did it happen? What changed between these two times in this neighborhood? Kind of building up this larger intelligence so that you can ask it questions instead of the current model, which is there's just one data set and you should use that one. Like it's recognizing that there's a past and a present and a future to these changes. Um, 